The distinguishing feature of the last century has undoubtedly been the growing involvement of the public sector, the government, in the economies of countries all around the world. Public sector spending as a percentage of gross domestic product, that's GDP, started at around 13% at the turn of the 20th century and rose to as high as 45% by the end of the century. And experts think it's set to grow further. The degree of government involvement differs from country to country. For instance, in the early years of the 21st century, government spending as a percentage of GDP for Sweden was as high as 38%. For the United Kingdom, 35%. The United States of America was 20%. Chile, 21%. For Thailand, 20%. India, a low of 16%. Zimbabwe, a high 35% and for South Africa, about 28%. The big question for economists, and for you as a student of economics, is whether to regard the public sector as a hero, assisting in the creation of economic wealth and contributing to the economic well-being of all its citizens? Or is it a villain, hindering growth and wealth creation and plunging the nation into economic misery? How does the size of government affect the performance of a country's economy? You need to look at the context in which you're talking about. Because in some countries, perhaps, you know, where there's total chaos, you know, you can't just leave everything to the market. So there has to be, probably in that sense, big government. And then when the market starts to function, then you can reduce the role of government. But in the purely, like, clinical sense, government has to be there. Because some of the goods, like I said, you, have, you know there's externalities, issues. There's the, some of the, the goods are public good in nature. So if we leave everything to the market, there's going to be under provision. Because you know, other people are going to free ride off, off, the, off whatever that good is. Generally speaking, small government, I would say. But it also depends largely on what kind of government and what it does and does not do. Good government intervention at the right time, at the right place, there's nothing better for the economy than that. But bad government intervention at the wrong places, there's nothing worse for it. By no means would I say that the economy can be left entirely to its own devices and let markets, uh, market forces just play out without any intervention by the government. Like most economists, I won't give a straight answer to that. One goes back in our subject to the textbook definitions of what the roles government could play in the market economy or mixed economy uh, and from there you then deduce that it's also context specific. For example, if one thinks back a century or so ago, the country wouldn't have had a ISCO or ESCOM if government didn't get involved. But nowadays it's not really necessary anymore because private sector can fulfill some of those roles. So, as you can see, it's not such a simple question after all, and there's a whole variety of views on the subject. But what we do know is that the size of government has a major impact on the economy, for good or for ill. It's therefore important to undertake a serious study of the role of the public sector in the economic life of a country. To illustrate the extreme circumstances that government intervention can create, let's take the case of Norway and Zimbabwe, as they were not too long ago, back in 2006. Now, in both countries, the size of government, or government spending, accounted for about 35% of gross domestic product. But life in Norway was very different to living in Zimbabwe. In Norway, in 2006, the gross national income per capita, that's what the average person earned during the year, was 66,530 US dollars. Now that was over half a million rand. In Zimbabwe, that same average person earned just $340. At the time, 2,700 rand for the whole year. Life expectancy in Norway was 80 years, while the average Zimbabwean could expect to live just 37 years. Economic growth in Norway was a healthy 2.9%, while in Zimbabwe it was minus 4.8%. Inflation in Norway at that time was around 2%, low by global standards, while Zimbabwe had a world high of 1,000%. It went on to achieve many more unwanted world records in this area. Anyway, 
the picture's pretty clear, based on these statistics. In Norway, the public sector could rightly be seen as a hero, promoting long life, wealth and security for all Norwegians. While in Zimbabwe, the public sector was clearly the villain. We need to know a lot more about the role of the public sector before we can make an informed judgment. So let's start by considering the role of the public sector.